Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of How To and Review. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Carry On Trailer Model 5X8SP-Gen for Generation 2 trailer. It is a 5x8 trailer that I picked up at Tractor Supply Company. Um, these Co these, this company sells trailers through a lot of local places like Lowe's, Tractor Supply Company, and a lot of different areas. These come pre-built from the factory, which is an important distinction from trailers. If you're looking at this, you're probably also looking at the ones from like Harbor Freight and lots of other places that you built. And in a lot of states, including the one I'm at in Pennsylvania, is you if it's pre-built from the factory you're going to get a certificate of origin uh regardless of, of of where you get it but that allows you to take it directly to a tag service to have a it registered and a tag put on it um, in pennsylvania and other states if you build it yourself it's considered a kit trailer or a homemade trailer and depending where you're at you may have to take that to a inspection station a weight carry station i know the process in pennsylvania is an absolute nightmare uh, price wise uh, this actually was listed outside at 11.99 i picked this up for uh, a sale price of 9.99 um and uh overall it seems to be a pretty good deal um i'm gonna go through all the different steps of how i registered this but first i want to give my initial thoughts of the trailer itself um this is the gen 2 and there's been some improvements um, i'm sure you've looked at other reviews from other reviewers as well too but this is my take on it um, i brought it home on my discovery sport which has a class 2 trailer hitch this does take a two inch ball uh, which is good because that's what I already had on here. Um, the locking, mechan locking mechanism for itself, as you can see, it this lifts up and down. And this is how you attach your trailer on if you've never used a trailer before. And what this does here is there's a little locking neck. You see if I lift that up, it moved a little bit. When I push this back down, there is a little clip that keeps this from popping back off your ball underneath. Now, if you do hit a bump, there is a possibility that this could lift up. So you, at a minimum, you want to put some type of lynching pin in here. And what this is going to do, theoretically, if I can get this back in here, there we go, is this will prevent this from slipping back out if you hit a nasty bump. Now, you can also get one installed with a lock so that it'll help prevent someone from stealing this off of your vehicle. Um, and the same thing, of course, when you put the your ball mount on your vehicle, you can put it, a lock there as well, too. The tires on this, it comes with a 13-inch tire. If we look in here, we can see the payload capacity for this is 1,600 pounds. This is the base model, which comes without the floorboards. I kind of went looking at both, and ultimately I decided just to get this, I'm going to add my own wood floor to it later. Um, Construction-wise, I actually say, you know, for the price, and I, I think that's the big caveat with this trailer, is for the price, this is actually a pretty good deal. Um, it's a five by eight bed, as you can see. The paint quality is not as bad. When I went there, there was about 10 to choose from, so I got, as the store clerk called it, the pick of the litter. Um, so I found the one that had the least amount of rust, so these do sit outside, so and they are prone to rust, um, even as they're sitting outside in the parking lot. And if we look carefully, we can see some rust starting to form a little bit. Um, so one of the things you're probably going to do is add some extra paint to this to prevent it that from happening. That being said, the paint job itself is not terrible. Um, and I think if I use this mostly um, and, you know, for quick runs and left it inside of a garage or left it covered, it actually probably would last much more rust free uh, longer. Obviously, leave this on the elements. It's going to wear down much, much quicker. Um, we have our, trop, our drop down tailgate back here. And from what I've seen in the previous model, one of the distinctive differences is this is removable. You can see there are narrow bolts holding on this as opposed to a uh, welded hinge. One question I had, which I didn't see a lot of people talk about, is when you drop this down, you pull this mechanism here. It's gonna release that, oops. Pull, twist, it'll release and lock it into there. Pull, twist lock this into here this will obviously drop down but 
This will also drop this way. Notice they put these little hand finger holes in here. You can probably also attach something in there as well too, but this will fold completely flat. So if you're like me and maybe you're gonna store this in a garage, maybe flip this one aside or flip it uh, vertical, uh, you don't have to worry about that tailgate sticking out in the back over here, which is kind of nice. Just go ahead and lift this back up. Now when we go the opposite way, this lip here, if you notice, uh, does stick out, so this should be the contact point. As we put it down, let's go ahead and double check that. But you can see, it does not go all the way down. Um, so, it's a little bit of a lip here, uh, but that shouldn't be an issue for most. Now, granted, I'm on a little bit of an incline here as well, too. You could probably opt to get the longer uh, tailgate, which I think is available in some of the other models. But for my purposes, this will work just fine. Now, one thing to note, this is pretty common to most of these trailers though, is that the bottom of this is metal. There's really no other contact here besides the paint. So you're gonna add a, some type of protection in there. Number one, to give you stability, uh, but also, you know, you don't want this getting stretched up every time you go ahead and drop this down on whatever you drop this on. So maybe that's one upgrade you could do to this. Uh, there is no way to lock this um, so it stays at the bed length, um, at least off the cuff. What is nice though, is you do have these contact points here and also in here. So I can imagine if you wanted to, you could add some type of a chain or wire system that'll hold it flat if you opt to go for that. Um, so that's a possibility. There are tie hooks, four of them, uh, two on the back here, two on the side over here. Has an LED light here, reflectors over there. Uh, the lights, pretty basic lights, um, tested, they work great. The license plate location is right down in here. And when I put the license plate on, it gets pretty close to the ground. So probably another change I'm gonna make is to relocate that somewhere else. I mean, it's fine where it's at if you're on a flat surface, but if you go over a type of any bump, maybe even a deep enough speed bump that actually may scrape or bend that. What is good though, if it did happen, this is made of metal and it's not plastic, so it's a little bit more durable. You could always bend it back. Um, other thoughts, little things too, which are nice. Uh, well, let's, let's go through the frame itself. If we look through, this is a solid piece. This is a solid piece. Uh, these are basically angle irons in here. Um, so while these are strong, they don't have the full strength of a full beam over here. Um, so keep that in mind. That being said, there are three here. The axle itself is in here. You can see it. this one was made in Livonia, Georgia. Um, and right from the factory, uh, this mounts right above the leaf spring. I know some people like to relocate this to below the leaf spring to add a little bit more ground clearance. So that's something you can do. And from what I can tell, it's not welded on or anything. Um, I could be wrong about that, but so it, it shouldn't be a too terribly hard job to do. Um, and speaking of which, a lot of little things. If we look at the fender and whatnot, uh, these are bolts holding these on. I think there might be a tack weld here or there. I could be wrong, but it looks like this fender is removable and possibly replaceable if needed. Um, you can see as I look underneath here, the uh, tongue, this is bolted on, so you can replace this as well too if you need to. Um, wiring, you have patch points where they run the wires through. One thing I would like to see maybe are these wires a little bit more covered up at the grounding point, but if you're gonna put wood up here, that'll probably mostly protect that. Uh, so there's a quick look at the beam underneath. Overall, it seems to be pretty good. And I think probably one of the first things you're going to want to do is reinforce this here. So let's go ahead and drop this down. Now I'm, a, I'm not a small guy by any means. So I just want to see what this is like actually just walking and standing on it. Which you figure contact point wise, that's going to put a lot more weight on a single point than a lot of the payloads you're going to put in. And coming up here... You know what, there is some give here. You can, I don't know if you can see that at all. So, you know, this does not feel as secure as walking on top of the beams. So one of the first things you're probably gonna wanna do is add some type of harder surface to this. Um, you could use uh, plywood. It is five foot wide, so you'd have to probably use two pieces. 
uh, to cover it up. Um, or you could get a bunch of planks, either run it lengthwise or widthwise. I mean, to really get strength there, you're gonna need to run it front to back and not side to side. Otherwise, you're really only tying up on the very ends unless you're running over top of a beam here. But overall, it doesn't feel terrible. Um, I've read that the payload capacity of this back here is about 800 pounds, about half the weight of the interior. And keep in mind too, though, if you do put a new floor in here, that's gonna take off your payload capacity. So let's say you put uh, 15 pound planks or whatever they're gonna weigh, uh, multiply that out depending what your thickness is and what type of wood you use. Um, it's gonna reduce it some, not a lot, but it'll reduce it some. Driving this, it was pretty solid overall. That being said, you know, if you've ever rented a trailer from someplace like U-Haul or whatnot, which is maybe your step before you decided to buy one, is not going to be as strong, heavy, and sturdy. And it, it's important to keep that in mind as you're as you're driving. Um, because of that, is this is a I think it weighs like three to four hundred pounds, and it's kind of bulky. It's kind of big for you know its size, right? Um, it's not something really small. And so as you hit bumps and everything, if this is unladen, there's nothing in here, it's gonna bounce a, quite a bit. Um, so you're gonna get a lot of movement back here. One thing I did not do, which I'm gonna definitely fix right away, is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this uh, mount is pretty secure. So if not, you wanna add a clamp on there to clamp it directly to your receiver. Um, so you don't get as much uh, slop as you're driving, which in case you're wondering, slop basically is when this will move around, which I can probably actually do. You can see right there, that's an example of slop. Um, the wiring pin, it's a four pole wiring pin. Uh, pretty basic, it's pretty well protected too. Um, but you know, for the money, this is actually not really a bad buy at all, I'd say, uh, all things considered. So um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm gonna also follow up with this um, later in this video. We're gonna be taking this out. I'm gonna put some motorcycles in it, which is one of the reasons uh, that I put this in. Off the cuff, I can see as far as loading a motorcycle. Uh, we have our tie down hooks. There's only two directly in here, but I could also use these side beams too. Um, I'm gonna get some chocks, probably from Harbor Freight or something like that. So I can chalk up one to two scooters up here. Uh, as well as uh, one of my motorcycles, I could take out my Rebel or maybe my TW200. Um, and this is good too. Obviously you can take those outside the area to ride, but you could also use it to take back inside the shop, um, which is kind of nice. And uh, obviously you're gonna use this for utility purposes too. It is kind of nice knowing that you can remove this tailgate um, so that, you know, if you are gonna get something that's longer, you have two options. Um, this is open here, there's no wire mesh, so you could run some stuff through, you just have to be mindful that the further out you go, the more as you turn, the more chance there is, you're gonna get closer and closer to your car. But that being said, as long as you're careful, you could probably get away with hanging out the front, maybe like eh, 12 inches, not that you should. Um, you could also take this off to extend a little bit over, but if you've never used a trailer, one thing you always wanna do is you wanna put, generally the best, most stable way to put your weight on a trailer is in the front. The further you go back, the more it's gonna have a tendency to try to lift the front end of this off, um, which for the most part, you'd really have to pull a lot of force to get that off, though it can happen, um, but the other thing it can do is if you're driving, you make some type of high speed maneuver, the further your weight goes in the back and you have to do an emergency correction, the more this is going to dog tail and wag back and forth. Um, and the further your payload is on the front, the more stable it's going to be and the faster it's going to be to correct as you make those uh, high speed um, maneuvers. And of course, you know, you never plan to do that, but you know, you could be the best driver in the world, but there's always a lot of knuckleheads out there that may not be as good as you. So you just want to be wary of that. Um, but that's a whole other video. And there's a lot of other videos on how that works and how you can correct for that. Uh, another thing to keep in mind though, is that this, these tailgates are heavy. Um, so having it completely vertical means that the entire weight of this tailgate, which I think I read somewhere online is 
uh, at least probably 100 pounds, if not maybe, probably around 100 pounds. This is going to add 100 pounds, but it adds 100 pounds to the very, very tail end of this trailer. Which, if you remember, simple mechanics and physics in elementary and maybe uh, early middle school, it's like a lever. So the further back you go, the more strength this exerts against the trailer. One nice thing, nice thing I do like about this is that you can fold this all the way down as I showed flat, and that's gonna redistribute some of this weight back on the trailer. So if you're hauling this empty, what you may want to consider is actually driving with this down. You're still going to probably want to secure it with at least a zip tie or something like that. Just keep it from bumping. And again, this is metal on metal, so maybe add uh, some type of soft rubber or even a, like a towel or something like that to add some type of cushion against the bottom of the trailer so you don't just scratch it to heck. Um, but overall, I'd say initially impressions, I'm, initial impressions, I'm pretty impressed. Um, registering this. It was a relatively painful process, or not painful. Registering this was a relatively painless process, uh, which kind of surprised me. I've led, read lots of horror stories, at least here in Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania, our DMV, which we call PennDOT, is notorious for making things difficult. If I bought something from Harbor Freight, my step, first step in Pennsylvania is, well, first I'd have to build it. Then I had to take that to a way station and I guess magically get that there because you can't drive this on the road without a plate. Um, in, in Pennsylvania as well as a lot of different states, that's, a, that's just asking a cop to give you a ticket. The next step is after I get that officially weighed, I need to take it to a safety inspection. They're going to take a look at it and if you have a completely flat trail, they're going to say, uh, 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 you have to add some type of rail on the side here. Um, so they're going to have you put that in if it doesn't come with it. Uh, your next step after that is you're going to have to pay um, some additional fees in order uh, to get it registered, which you would anyway. But it's also going to come as a homemade trailer, which doesn't add the, probably the same value as something that's made from a manufacturer. And really the only difference between something like this or in something to assemble yourself um, is that, well, it was put together by factory technicians. Uh, it was built as a whole piece by the manufacturer and because of that the uh, state departments throughout the country trust that assembly better than you just work in your backyard maybe not bring everything to the exact torque specification um, so it does add value i feel too as well and it makes it a lot easier you know i was able to buy this at a tractor supply company last night around 6 p.m my local tag service they actually closed at six so i they held it for me i ran down to my uh local tag service which was jack rabbit over in lansdale that's the name of them they're actually pretty good about this um oh you also want to double check with where you buy it from like i specifically called the tractor supply company that I bought this from, and they have their dealer uh, file on record with this one specific notary. If I had gone somewhere else, I would have had that had that what's called an MSO, um, which is your uh, basically your certificate of origin, um, which is your pre-title, your your application for a title. They had their dealer record on file to a specific notary. If I didn't have that, I could still technically take it to any tag service or even out of state, but I would have had to get that notarized first, which then you got to bring a notary uh, probably to the tractor supply place, have them sign off on it. But so always call the place first to ask them, you know, how this is done. And if they can't answer that for you, maybe call another store. Um, even if it's in the same company, because these are all, you know, in the end, they're run by local employees with local agreements. So overall, it was pretty painless. Uh, I went in that morning, I got my tag, took about 20 minutes, went back to the tractor supply place. Um, the gentleman there was fantastic. He helped me out. He actually even threw in the locking pin, which did not come with it, and threw in some uh, tag uh, bolts for the tag as well too, and got me on my way. So overall, relatively painless. It's a lot less work than I expected. Um, so I think our next steps, let's actually try to go ahead and use this for what we're using it for. I was like, okay, so our, for our first test of this trailer, we're gonna head out and pick up some fence material. 
um, from a private property owner uh, to take back to work on our fence. I'm um, going to do a couple little things before we head out uh, just to make this a little bit easier to transport and work with. Um, as I'm driving with this, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a little bit of slop here and you can see it here that this hitch mount, well you probably can't see it too much, you, you can see that, that slop right there. This is moving a bit so I really need a uh, coupler clamp to lock this down. Um, one thing that will help with that and also will allow it to drive better is to put more weight on the front and there's two ways we can do this. I'm not going to need the ramp. So the first thing we can do, well, first of all, I stopped by local Lowe's, could be Home Depot, Ace Hardware, wherever you got, doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, they're all gonna have these things. First of all, I went and got myself a tarp. Um, I don't have a wood decking on here yet. I probably will add it to it. Uh, but until then, I don't wanna completely destroy this finish. Um, so we're gonna start out with a little bit of a tarp. I'm not gonna open this all the way up just yet. but at least give us something here. And I'll show you why in a second. Uh, I bought two 50 pound bags of gravel. Um, I use these things all the time. Um, it's interesting. I found that Lowe's, their gravel varies from location to location. In my area, we have like a white stone gravel. Um, I found through personal experience over in Jersey, I think theirs actually is black. Um, so they have a little bit different type of material there. And this is gonna add some more front ballast to here to help stabilize the front, which is what you want. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fold in this tailgate. But before we do that, um, I mean, I could take off the tailgate. That's one option. That removes all this weight off the back. Another option is just to fold this back down. But of course, you fold this back down, you're gonna have metal, riding on metal. And we're doing about 40 miles and that's gonna add a little wear to this. So, little simple solution I was thinking of. So I ran over to Lowe's and this is a self-adhesive. So for now, we're just gonna try it. And if it works, we're gonna take off the adhesive and use it. Um, I added a rubber pipe insulation, which of course you can find at any local Lowe's. Uh, this is the rubber, not the foam, which is a little bit more durable. I'm gonna overlap this just enough so it'll fold in and not touch anything. So there we go. Um, I always keep a pair of scissors in my SUV. These are not the wife's scissors, in case you're wondering. For just like little occasions like this, and we'll just take this, snip off the end. And we're gonna fit that right in. So our idea here is what we can do is we can fold this down. It's gonna rest on the bottom. And my thought is too, I actually might pick up a, another piece to actually, I can put some slits in here and run it along here as well too. Um, and just add a little bit more cushion protection uh, to this trailer lid. And the adhesive should keep that on theoretically going reasonably fast on the highway once I take that off, which I'm not gonna do just yet. First, we can do a little test here. Let's go ahead and take off our hook supports here. Oops. All right. Let's go ahead and lower this. Of course, this is also help out with aerodynamics as well, too. All right. And let's see if this is actually doing anything. Well, it is hitting here. This does seem actually more secure. I can see it's actually just a hair above this line here. Um, so you actually maybe add more padding to the front to do this, but you know what? This will work in a pinch, I think. And I'll cut down a little bit at least. Now again, once I put in the metal, this is probably not gonna work anymore, right? Because, oh, well, yeah, that's a good point. It's an interesting uh, thing about this is if you add the wood, you are gonna lose the ability to completely fold this flat. So it's just something to think about, I guess. Let's go ahead and return our cart here and we'll get it going. All right, so we just got back from our little journey. We went out there. It was about a 40, minute, a 40 mile drive out there. Um, trailer did really well um, with those uh, two gravel bags up front for the most part. There was a little bit of slop and I can feel it moving some. Then we got there, we loaded in about a total of 20 rails and about 20 posts and three gates underneath. 
total is probably going to be somewhere a little over a thousand pounds on this trailer its, it's capacity is 1600 pounds um and it did really well i mean this handled bumps along country roads we even went over some speed bumps i didn't feel any slop at all once at all like once it's got loaded up lengthwise these are 11 foot rails um this actually worked really well even though it's an eight foot trailer uh and then the posts i think are around seven and a half, seven to a seven and a half feet but um overall and now as far as loading it you can see what i did is i put the three uh gates there is one in the front two in the back and then we also have the drop down gate here to give it more of a forward motion which is what you want when you load your trailer you want more of your weight as possible on the front end rather than the back end that's going to give you con better control uh coming back we did uh, you know for the mo we're heading out there we hit 65 this thing didn't feel any twist at all in it really for the most part um, and then coming back, we range anywhere from about 30 miles an hour up to about 45, maybe 50 um, in that range. And mostly stop and go up and down hills, actually up and down some really steep hills. And I didn't really uh, feel too much at all as far as um, sway. Uh, really did well. I'm pretty impressed with it overall. The tie down hooks, you can see when we uh, tied it down, we crossed it over top. And um, the gentleman who I picked these up from actually... Uh, he commented he actually really liked this trailer himself he's like wow that's pretty nice overall and he almost fell over when i told him how much i picked it up for um, down at a tractor supply company so overall loading stuff does really well and we'll go on to our next test all right so we've hauled lumber with this um, we've done some runs i made a quick adjustment here i went ahead and added a clamp uh, to help keep this more secure for our next ride which is loading these two scooters on here and taking them out for labor day for a nice little ride so let's go ahead and get started so first thing obviously pull down this ramp now i did go ahead and put two on the bottom here of the leftover spacers i tried to put this on and you know i didn't realize how quickly this foam uh went ahead and sealed itself once you took the glue strips off so some of it's holding some of it's not we'll see whether or not that's going to hold i don't know uh the bottom ones are holding just great <coughs> there we go and you know that is nice it, yeah i like that so let's go ahead and get our scooters on We'll take the Weiss Honda Metropolitan up first. All right. Now the nice thing about scooters, you know, I wasn't planning. I do have actually wheel shocks for this. Um, but I do not obviously have these installed yet. One thing that is nice about scooters you have a built-in kickstand. Now the problem with the kickstand in this is I got to push down. Oh, actually worked a little bit better than I thought it was. I thought I'd push too hard against the metal. So that actually will hold it there fine for me. We can go ahead and turn this off for now. And let's go ahead and get our ruckus. It's a, uh, just in case you're wondering what these are. This is a 2006 Honda Metropolitan and a 2008 Honda Ruckus. Now the trick with any type of loading, especially obviously with these, is you're going to want some type of balance, um, which is the key to keeping these guys upright. But you also have to have opposing forces pushing against each other. You can go ahead and turn this one off for now. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and lock these down. Now, theoretically, like I said, I do have chucks, which would help. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I think to put the chucks in properly. See, there's nothing really. To attach the chucks i have to attach it to the wire which i'm not 100 sure i trust um yet but uh so theoretically the best thing to do is at least get a piece of plywood for the front here to put the chucks on um the chucks are basically holders for the uh front wheels um or literally put in a piece of plywood for the whole thing and lock that in um i'm not gonna do that just yet i want to see how it goes with just this because not everybody's gonna have a chuck system 
So let's go ahead and tie this down. So let's go ahead and start securing these scooters. If you do not have a check, it definitely helps to have someone assist as Pepper is going to do here. And help can simply be someone sitting on the bike to help stabilize it. No, you can definitely do this yourself as well. The key to stabilizing any object in a trailer or truck that does not want to stay upright is to use opposing forces. You can do this by attaching straps, ropes, or bungees that pull in opposite directions with your object in the middle. And this tension will keep that thing in the middle in place. As with everything, balance. Key to the force it is. But uh, all seriously, um, in seriousness, if you just keep those uh, forces opposing, this will do a pretty good job. Just be sure you don't pull down too hard so you don't damage your forks um, within these bikes. So with these bikes secure, we went ahead and headed out to Valley Forge. Um, it was Pepper's first time actually out on the open road on a scooter. And I felt Valley Forge has a nice area you can drive through. It'll be a great learning area for her to start out. Unfortunately, I forgot my GoPro uh, as we went out. So we did take some pictures as we finished up here, as you can see. And um, we had a fantastic time doing it. All right, so as you can see, we made it safe and back. We made it back and safe. Uh, no issues with these scooters. We had a great day riding around in uh, Valley Forge National Park. Took Pepper out for her first scooter ride. Um, each of these weigh anywhere about, I'd say, 300 pounds each. So this has about 600 pounds on the front, maybe 700, which is more typical, maybe of a, yeah, like a, a lighter Harley, uh, maybe a lighter Goldwing. Um, I think my Honda Rebel, that thing weighs about 400 pounds. Like I said, these are around the two to 250, maybe 300 pounds with the fuel and oil and everything in it. Um, overall, I'll tell you what, the, one of the big differences that I made, uh, you can see I went ahead and added a jack to this too. Uh, picked this up at Hallmaster for $30. There's a separate review on this and how I installed that. Pretty relatively straightforward. Um, overall, this thing was really tight. Uh, you know, one, one complaint or joking complaint I made to the wife. Uh, riding as I said, I, I missed all the rattles from the U-Haul trailers that would rattle and sound like they were falling apart as we're, we're, as we're driving. And I think her response was, I, I, is that a con? <laughs> Probably isn't really. Um, but this actually did really, really well. In fact, actually, after using this enough, I think the first thing everybody does right away without even testing it out is replacing this wire mesh. But after talking with my wife and I about it, um, I'm not sure that I'm actually going to be replacing this anytime soon, the wire mesh. I kind of like the wire mesh, the fact that it drains down. Um, it allows me to fold that all the way flat as opposed to not being able to do that. Um, so I kind of see that as a plus at this point. Um, so for now, I'm going to leave that in there. I, I do want to add some additional mounts on the outside, so I'll weld those on. Um, when I do that, I'll have a video for that, but that's probably not going to be anytime nearly soon. I actually bought some chucks for the motorcycle. I didn't use them. Actually, these secure just fine, just like this. Um, really, really well. But overall, I tell you, you can't beat this for $1,000. I think this is a really good trailer. Uh, thanks to Tractor Supply and um, Jack Rabbit Tags for making the process so easy, too. Uh, couldn't have asked for more. So overall, two thumbs up. Love this thing. Um, it's funny, my, my son was over over the holiday weekend and uh, I mentioned, hey, I got a trailer. And he goes, I thought you had one already. I, I, how do you not have a trailer? And apparently I guess I should have had a trailer a long time ago. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like and subscribe for future content. It really does help out the channel. And if uh, you have any comments, again, I'm an amateur using this. I'm no professional by any means. Uh, please leave them in the comment section below for other readers. Uh, just be, try to be respectful, of course, to everybody. Uh, that's all I ask. And um, other than that, I try to upload as often as I can uh, while working a full-time busy schedule. Uh, so stay tuned for future videos. Um, I know I have a couple more in the works um, following up, including how to install this Hallmaster uh, jack on this trailer. But um, I think that's going to do it for this video. Uh, so looking forward to see you again in a future video. Until I do, get out there and make your own great outdoor adventures. 
And as always, take care. <laughs>